What's going on everybody? Warren with Sirens Project and today we're going to be doing the 50 hour service interval on our 2022 SVL 75. There's five parts to this. Um, we're going to be doing the outer element of the air cleaner. We're also going to be doing the evacuator valve. Both of those need to be cleaned out. We're going to move on to the uh, track tension. We'll also drain the fuel tank, uh, a little bit of any debris or accumulated water at the bottom. And then we're also gonna be uh, replacing the hydraulic oil filter that's located underneath the cab. I'm also going to have a scanned version of the service manual uh, and include a link below in the description that will link to our website and a blog post referencing this video and the entire service. Let's just get after it and uh, it shouldn't take very long. All right, so we're at the back of the machine. We're gonna open the door and locate the uh, air cleaner housing. It's gonna be convenient because the outer element and the evacuator valve are both located on the same housing. This is gonna be probably the simplest part of the entire service. Now that we have the door open, um, it's really easy to locate the uh, air filter housing. So here we have the cover for the uh, air cleaner element. Down here at the bottom is the evacuator valve and notice that it is uh, facing down. There's an indicator here on the top um, that references what direction this needs to go back on. There's only three tabs here that we need to lift up in order to remove this cover. And just like that, the cover is out. And we'll just wipe in here with some wipes and then dry it off and we're also gonna blow out the uh, outer element, you want to leave the inner element in. Uh, it's really easy to damage, so you don't want to you don't want to mess with that. And we're going to blow this filter from the inside out. So we got the uh, outer element air filter housing um, all cleaned up. And like I said, this is the evacuator valve. Really just wanna make sure there's no uh, blockages or you know large pieces of debris in there. We did blow it out uh, with low pressure on the air compressor and just kind of wiped the inside down. Just uh, remember that the top indicator needs to be facing uh, towards, towards the top. The evacuator valve needs to be uh, facing towards the bottom of the maintenance bay. So yeah, we'll just stick this back on and that concludes uh, cleaning the uh, outer element of the air filter and the evacuator valve. So we're making great progress. Let's keep going. All right, so now we're going to check the track tension against the uh, lower idlers. And so we're going to lift the front of the machine, get some slack in the track and uh, take a tape measure and measure from the top of the track to the bottom of the idler. And that, uh, per the service manual, needs to be within 0.8 inches to 1.2 inches, uh, somewhere in that range uh, to be at the correct tension. It's super easy to do, and I'll show you guys uh, how that's done in just a second. All right, so now we're gonna tension the tracks up a little bit. We took a measurement from the second idler, um, from, the, from the bottom of the idler to the top of the track, and we're sitting right at uh, 1.5 inches. Um, so we need to bring that down um, or tighten that up by about half an inch. And so how you do that, this guard plate right here protects the uh, grease fitting that is responsible for uh, tensioning the track. And so grease is really the only thing that's tensioning these tracks. So there's a plunger um, that is forced uh, out towards the front of the machine as more grease is applied. And as that happens, the track draws up closer to the idlers. So we're gonna take these two bolts off, access the grease fitting, we use our grease gun, and uh, we'll just keep adding uh, grease incrementally, taking measurements until we're uh, between 0.8 inches and 1.2 inches. So right around an inch and uh, we'll be good to go.
So we uh, gave it some grease and rechecked the measurement and we're right at um, an inch. So we're within spec. We'll do the other side and that will conclude uh, tensioning the tracks. So underneath the skid, we have a fuel drain valve access plate and there's two bolts here that we need to uh, that we need to at least loosen so we can uh, swing this plate out of the way and access the uh, drain valve. And we'll put a little container under here and drain some of the uh, diesel out. We're using a 17 millimeter socket um, to loosen these bolts and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some clean fuel. So we'll see what it looks like. So this is the drain valve for the fuel tank. It is a 19 millimeter or you can use a three quarter um, socket as well. So we're gonna go ahead and break this loose and let some of this drain into our, uh, into our container. And we'll uh, set it to the side and let everything settle and see, see what we look like. All right, so we finished draining the uh, fuel tank a little bit, waiting for things to settle, but uh, honestly, everything's looking great. There was a little bit of debris, um, but honestly, about what you would expect from uh, just fueling up in general. So we're gonna move back to the 17 millimeter socket. I'm gonna put this cover plate back, tighten these bolts. Now that uh, we finished the uh, track tension, we're gonna move on to the uh, hydraulic oil filter. So to change out the hydraulic oil filter, we're gonna need to lift the cab. And to do that, we need to remove two bolts that are at the front corners of the cab before we can pull the safety pin and lift it. So for this, you're gonna need a 15 16 or 24 millimeter socket to pull these bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Then we'll move to the back of the machine and show you the safety pin. Now that we have removed the two bolts uh, that hold the cab down, we're going to remove the safety pin uh, so we can lift the cab up. Once we lift the cab in, in the upright position, we'll come back and reinsert the safety pin. You don't want to work under the cab without the safety pin engaged because you could run the risk of the cab falling back on top of you. The cab is assisted by gas springs to help lift, uh, lift it up, but you don't want to rely on that when you're working under there. So let's pull this pin. All right, so cab's lifted, locked in place with a safety pin. The oil filter is in this back corner here, but now is a good time to take a look over everything, the hydraulic pump, um, any of the hoses, electrical, anything like that that could be loose or leaking. You know, maybe blow some of this uh, trash out of here to have a little bit cleaner of a working space. Sometimes these, uh, these filters can be a little, uh, a little stubborn. So they have these little slots uh, channeled out at the top of the filter and you can take a uh, you know, chisel or a flathead screwdriver and kind of tap on that with a hammer to, to loosen it up. Just be kind of ginger with it. Um, we have our uh, filter wrench on there. Put a little container, a little paint container to capture some of the hydraulic fluid that will be lost um, when we pull this filter out. Got some rags down here too. Begin to loosen this up. And now we're basically ready to go by hand.
All right, now that we got the filter out, we'll go, go ahead and wipe some of this excess uh, hydraulic fluid up. We'll go over to the, the new filter, fill it up uh, with hydraulic fluid, and then we'll just uh, twist it back on. So now we have the new genuine Kubota oil filter. Uh, I would like to mention that you don't actually have to do this every 50 hours. This is our first uh, 50 hour service interval. So uh, the manual does call for a filter change. So we're gonna pre-fill this before we stick it up in there and tighten it. We'll do a, a hand tight and then maybe another quarter to half turn, snug it up with a, with a wrench. Then we'll check our levels. Um, after starting uh, the Kubota and we can fill it back up based on the sight glass um, inside the cab. So the cab's back down, we got the bolts back in safety pins back in. That concludes the 50 hour service interval for the SVL 75. Really hope this video um, helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions, comments, uh, please drop them below. Also remember that the PDF for the service manual is gonna be posted in the link in the description. It's gonna be on our website. Uh, there's gonna be a blog post that kind of highlights some of the key points here. Uh, that we've covered today so thank you guys so much for tuning in like and subscribe to this channel and we'll see you guys soon